I am a noble lady. And you, you, you will only talk to me if you start your sentence with a kiss and, of course, grovel. Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. And in today's episode, we look very specifically at a question that was posed on our website, www.greatgamemaster.com. And the question was, how do you play a noble or a ranking officer in a role-playing group effectively and so that you don't alienate the rest of your team if they're not ranking members or are not nobles? Well, it's a very fine line between being a noble who looks down on the population or on being a commoner who just works with everybody and doesn't judge anyone based on class. So how do you play a noble or a ranking officer? Well, the first thing you've got to look at is you've got to ask your GM, how does a noble rate or how do they operate in uh, amongst mixed people? Are nobles approachable by the common folk? Do they disdain from the common folk? Uh, do they wear different types of clothing? In Elizabethan England, for example, different types of fabric were allocated to different ranks of society, and you were taxed according to the type of clothing that you wore, or at least the type of fabric that your clothing was made out of. Certain levels of nobility couldn't wear purple, for example. Others couldn't wear blue or green. So. You have to ask your GM just what is the situation. And it's the same with rank. Do the officers expect to be treated as gods by the uh, servicemen and the uh, non-commissioned officers and the lower ranks? Or are they fairly jovial and the title is more of an honorary thing as to who is the leader? Again, it's a decision that your GM needs to make and then give to you so that you can then follow it along. Now, I do feel that the important thing to stress here is that you then, once you've established with your GM that this is how nobles treat common folk, or this is how ranked individuals treat lower ranks and non-commissioned officers, you then need to chat to your fellow players. Do you mind if I play a haughty prince who does not negotiate with commoners because they're beneath him? But I will talk to you because you're clearly a trusted advisor, even though you were born calm. It's not your fault. You're a very decent chap for your sort of person. <laughs> Do they mind that if you play this arrogant character who may go on a character journey to discover that we're all equal and that rank means and birth means nothing? Do they mind if you're playing the lieutenant who's in charge of the entire operation and you give orders to the rest of them? If you're going to play the captain of a starship, they need to be willing to follow your orders and not question them if the GM has said, well, there is a very firm military structure in place and if an officer's orders are not followed, it's a court martialable offence. Once your players have agreed, your fellow players have agreed to work with you on this journey and your GM has laid out the rules, you can then start to work out what kind of leader, what kind of noble, what kind of officer your character is going to be. Most of the time, you want to play the ideal noble, or the chivalrous lord, or the ideal officer, the ideal ranking officer. The ideal ranking officer is somebody who, in the situation, in any situation, and this is a noble as well, will turn to their trusted allies and immediately say, All right, ladies, gentlemen, we are faced with this problem. Suggestions. Give me your thoughts. Then, as with the character type of leader, the rank, the ranking officer or the noble will then listen to those ideas and then make a decision. That's not just the role of a leader, though. And in terms of this video, a noble or a commander of a troop of men. The role is to go further than that, and this is up for you to explore. You can play the surly captain who's always drunk and doesn't give a damn, who has dogs that bark in the background for no reason whatsoever other than the fact that they saw their own shadow. You could do that. That could be irritating if you have no redeeming features at all. And what are those redeeming features? Well, firstly, when your team completes an objective, 
that you've laid out for them, this is as a captain, as a ranking officer, or as a noble, congratulate the team. And don't just say, oh, well done, everybody. We've, we've won and we've, we've defeated the object. Congratulate them. Give them a rousing speech before they go off and attempt the task and give them a rousing speech afterwards. As a noble, most of your functions are to act as figurehead of this ideal of what the lower classes should be aspiring to be. As a ranking officer, you should be the paragon of your species and you should also make your men aspire to be better. So teamwork should be greatly, greatly praised. Then you move on to the individual. And this is where a true ranking officer or a true noble shines. You've taken notice of the little person and you go to them and whether you are the arrogant noble or whether you are the humble noble, you thank them personally for their contribution, for their efforts, for their dedication to the cause, and most importantly, for never giving up in the face of certain danger. You inspire the individual, you inspire the group. Then those that did not necessarily perform or those who were against your orders initially but have followed them begrudgingly because the rest of the treatment has gone through with it. You go to them and you say, well, I hope this will inspire some trust in my leadership capabilities. Um, perhaps next time you can voice your concerns before we go into battle and um, we can work together for a stronger, better unit or house or empire, or whatever the uh, situation demands. So it's about going to the individuals that helped and going to the individuals that didn't help and working with both parties to make it a better group. It's also about looking after your people. You are the noble. You are the ranking officer. You must make sure that your men and women and things are taken care of, whether that's provisioned, whether that's being supplied with women and drink, whether that's being supplied with bigger quarters or better training facilities, that's something that you need to bring to the table as a noble or as a ranking officer. If you get people who disagree with you, and players decide that their characters are not going to follow your orders, even though the GM has said quite specifically that a noble whose orders are not followed can ask for the execution of the individual, or a captain whose orders are not followed can court-martial the individual. Don't play that card. Don't say, I'm going to court-martial you if you don't follow me. Respect is earned. It is not ordered. And if you order that player's character to go off and be executed, unless the player understands why uh, and accepts it, it will be very difficult to get that player to come back to your table. And it leaves a rather nasty taste in the mouth of your fellow players if they see that you are this despotic leader who doesn't care about the individual. An individual who doesn't follow your orders is best handled by asking them what they would do in the current situation and trying to understand their perspective, trying to understand their point of view, and if the rest of the party agrees with them, agreeing and going, all right, well, if you emphatically all believe that her plan is better, then we will follow her plan to begin with. I still have my reservations and my training speaks otherwise, but perhaps it will work out. Let us, let us attempt it. But let us also agree that if it fails, well, then we will try my way. So temperance and tolerance and setting the example yourself is the order of the day. Never get the party to do something that your character is not willing to do themselves. And if your character is incapable of doing it, be first to admit, I would not ask this of you if I myself could do it, but I am simply not as skilled as you are. All our hopes rest on your shoulders. I will provide you with any support I can in any way possible. You merely need to ask it and I shall supply it. So it really is about supporting your team. Although you are the noble, you're the ranking officer, you are technically the one who's got the most um, resources, if that's the world setting, you're the one who has the greatest pull 
bureaucratically and politically or in terms of rank. Your position really is behind the men, supporting them all the way. And in, if you can, being in front of the men and leading them all the way. Certainly that sets an excellent example. And if your players' characters are still not willing to follow you, well, then there is always the option of saying, I have noted your disagreement, but my order stands. We will do this. You can be resolute once you have considered all the options, once you have asked for all of the options and taken everything into account that is conceivable to be taken into account. If they still don't comply, then it's a case of stepping out of character and saying, dude, if you don't follow, I'm going to have to write you up or reprimand you and then following course on that action. But you must follow course on that action. That is the final thing that I can say about being a noble or being a ranking officer, is that there are times where you will have to put your foot down, where you will have to be the noble, the one who is high born, the ranking officer. And you will have to admonish your men for breaking order or for changing course. It is something that you will have to do. Try and do it as neutrally as possible without anger or without personal vindictive statements. Simply say it, you did not follow the prescribed orders for whatever reason. I am therefore recommending that you are disciplined or that you receive 50 lashes or however it might be. Of course, out of character, you can ask the player, listen, I know that you agreed initially to me playing the leader, but you don't seem to be interested in, in actually following my orders. Is it because you don't think they're very smart or is it just because you want to play this rebel character? In which case we can build this great story between us where you've got this rebel who's rebelling against my leadership, my leadership trying to stamp down on your rebellion and together eventually they can come together. And you can go to the GM and say, listen, this is what we're planning on doing. We think it's going to be awesome. Can we continue with it? And just let everybody know that the antagonism is purely between characters and not between players. And if the player does state, I think you're making stupid commands. I think you're a bad leader. Sit back and reflect and ask your fellow players, am I, am I, actually, a, am I actually a commoner? Am I a non-commissioned, low-ranking, rank-and-file type of individual? Um, and maybe you might gain some insight. Perhaps you simply don't have it in you to be a haughty, arrogant noble. And yes, I know that historically the nobles and the upper ranks were considered to be the idiots who made bad decisions, leaving the lower ranks to try and solve the problem and muck on through. But your role here is a supportive role. Um, you don't want to be the dithering idiot. It doesn't remain entertaining for very long. At least that's not in my experience. So I hope this has answered your question on how to roleplay a noble or a commanding officer within a roleplaying group. And I hope that some of these ideas have helped spark you to play a ranking officer or a noble and to see how you can do it. And uh, if you want good examples of nobles, I think one needs to look no further than someone like, say, for example, Princess Diana, who was humble yet regal at the same time. Um, or Prince Harry, who's happy to serve in rank and file, even though he's heir to uh, the throne type of thing. So it's about a certain amount of humility. It's about realizing that you are what you are. And then it's about having fun with it as well. Commoners can be treated commonly because the rest of the party are your trusted confidants. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, watch the end of this video for our list of Patreons. We thank you all dearly for joining us on this journey that we are undertaking to make role-playing just that much better. And uh, until next time, I wish you happy playing.